Hello everybody, Michael Tyler here with another free Vectric Project of the Month. This month's project for April 2019 is called the Mother's Kitchen Plaquette. It's a decorative item for any kitchen and it features the uh, carving of the fruit group, a uh, pair, couple banners with the V-carved text here. And I've kept these components separately. The carved that's tool path is a composite of all of these components, but the separate components allow you to customize it how you like. For instance, if you wanted to put your mother's name or maybe your wife's name, maybe you don't need both banners, you just want to use one of the banners. You can move around the pair, you can alter the angle of the fruit group, whatever you like to make this project your own. Of course, you can also create your own models within the Aspire software yourself and just use this as an idea for a layout, a similar layout to this. The uh, rest of the video that follows, of course, goes through step by step all the uh, steps that were taken for machining, uh, finishing, uh, painting, and um, then the glazing technique that I applied over that. So I hope you'll enjoy the rest of this video. And as usual, we include the free PDF instructions. They're illustrated step by step and makes a great uh, companion for uh, the rest of this video as well. So if you uh, like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And finally, if you're not already subscribed to our channel, please subscribe for instant updates on any of the new project videos we release. If you do decide to make your own version of this, please feel free to share that on the Vectric forum and across social media channels. As usual, you can download the uh, project file, all the uh, PDF instructions and uh, from your VNCO account at uh, your account at Vectric. So I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. Happy carving, Michael Tyler. Until next month, have fun. Okay, I'm getting ready to sand off the, the fuzzies in some of these more detailed carved areas. And I found the easiest way to do that is to use these 3M uh, radial bristle discs. I use the 80 grit. And you put uh, three of these on a mandrel for your Dremel tool. Just stack three of them like this. And screw it on the mandrel. Once you've got that done, then uh, it's just a matter of using your Dremel tool. I like to use a flex shaft on my Dremel. So that's what I've got here. Here we 
we go. And I set the speed about uh, maybe halfway. It depends on the material I'm sanding and uh, all of that, but uh, I'll set that speed on halfway. And this makes it really easy to sand off those fuzzies and makes quick work out of it too. Okay, so I'll continue on and just sand off these little fuzzies off of here and we'll go back to the belt sander and I'll sand the edges of the flap and we'll go from there. All right, I've got the detail sanding done and I'm gonna put a light coat of 50-50 uh, denatured alcohol and zincer seal coat. So this zincer seal coat, this is just uh, de-waxed clear shellac and you just mix it half and half with uh, some denatured alcohol and that gives you this thin mixture that can be used for uh, pre-stain, kind of like a wood conditioner. But right now what I'm using it for, I'm just putting a thin coat on so that I can raise any fuzzies that are left and it'll stiffen them up when this dries and it'll make it easier for me to sand off any remaining fuzzies uh, before I apply final finishes. So I'll apply one thin coat of this, sand it lightly, and then I'll make a determination whether or not I need to use any more coats of the thinned denatured alcohol and zincer bullseye seal coat. Okay, progress update. I went ahead and sanded after that uh, first coat of the thin seal coat, removed the rest of the fuzzies. At that point, it was really ready to stain and apply clear coats after that and the project would have been finished. But I've decided to go ahead and seal this further with some more coats of the thin seal coat and apply some acrylic uh, craft paint, just add some color to the fruit carvings here and then apply a glazing technique uh, that we've all seen before. Just give that country kitchen look with a little pop of color there. So you have that option, stain it as is, clear coat it, look great. Or you can add some color and apply a glazing technique and uh, do that uh, instead of just the plain stain. So either way is fine. The project will look great either way. Your choice. All right, I've got the uh, plaque all ready to go. I've sealed it really well with the Krylon and I'm ready to paint. So I picked out a bunch of different colors of craft paint that I think that I may be able to use. So not sure if I'm gonna paint all these small details, the vines and so on. But uh, remember, I'm gonna be putting a stain over this as a glaze technique, but I do want this to have some color. So I think I'll start with the easy stuff, like uh, these could be plums right here, or they could be um, apricots or something. So you could choose you know, what you want. This obviously is a pear. This is a pear. That's a lemon. This could be an orange, or it could be a pear. Uh, and then we got the grape leaves and the, the grapes themselves. So. I'm just gonna kind of use that as my guide as I choose the paint colors. I've just got some uh, water-based uh, paints here and some water to just thin up and mix as I go along. So, okay, here we go, wish me luck. Oh, by the way, uh, I, when I'm planning on putting a darker color stain over a, a painting like this, a lot of times I will try to make the paints a little bit brighter than what I really want them to be. So that way when I apply the stain, it mutes those colors, but it's not, uh, it's not too dark. So I, I, I tend to use colors that are a little more vivid. That paint looks like it could use another bottle. So I think I'll start with uh, some leaves and different colors of greens. Okay, I've mixed up a few colors for 
the grapes, you know, just got some blue and red, a little bit of lavender, and just sort of mixing these up a little bit. So we'll have some purple grapes here. Might have to change to a smaller brush. Let's see how it goes. Okay, I'll let these uh, grapes dry a little bit and then I'll do the pears and orange and I guess uh, apricots maybe, I'm not sure yet. Uh, so I'll let that dry a little bit and then come back and finish off the uh, fruit. Okay, we'll let that dry. Then uh, once I've uh, coated it with some uh, Krylon to seal it, then I'll apply a stain or perhaps I'll apply a brown acrylic paint. I'll decide later. But uh, in any case, I'm gonna do a glazing technique over this. And hopefully that glazing uh, technique will enhance the carving. You can see that the paint, the paint wasn't done particularly neatly. Uh, but the carving, I'm hoping the recesses will capture the details of the carving and give some definition to what I've painted here. Okay, the acrylic paint is dry and I just need to apply a few light coats of Krylon Clear. I'll start with a little bit of gloss and then end up with flat. And once that dries, then I'll apply the uh, glaze. Okay, the paint's all dry and it's sealed. I'm gonna apply this Rust-Oleum Ultimate Wood Stain. Dries in about an hour, depending on temperature and humidity. I'm using a color called Carrington. It's a dark brown. So I'll apply that with a, a new disposable brush and uh, I've got an old one that's uh, stiffened up because it wasn't thoroughly clean, that was intentional. And I'll use that to help wipe off uh, you know, as a glaze. And I've also got some rags so I can use that, these rags to wipe off selectively those areas that uh, I need to. So uh, I'll go ahead and stir this up and then we'll apply the stain. All right, the glazing's all dry and I'm just getting ready to apply the final clear coats. I'm gonna use this Krylon Satin Crystal Clear. I'll just apply two or three light coats overall and that will complete the project. 